If you're looking for a commander deck that's weird, interesting, and just the right amount of evil, Marisil the Pretender may be for you. This legendary human wizard is a 4 4 for 4. Blue, black, red, and one of any color. When he enters the battlefield, you may exile a creature or artifact from your graveyard or hand and put a cage counter on it. Marisil has all activated abilities of cards you own in exile with cage counters on them. You can activate each of these abilities once each turn. In other words, Marisil is a commander who can gain new abilities every time you cast him. Even if your opponent removes him, when he returns to the battlefield, he will retain any previous abilities and add to them any new abilities you're able to cage with his Enter the Battlefield trigger. Because of this, Marisil can use the normally quiet Exile Zone as a staging ground for deadly and sometimes ridiculous combos. There are not a lot of ways for our opponents to interact with our combo pieces here, so this deck wants to use this to our advantage. But how does this whole cage counter thing really work? You can exile and cage any creature or artifact card from your hand or graveyard when Marisil enters the battlefield, but only those with activated abilities will affect Marisil. You'll be able to recognize the activated ability template of cost colon ability as we show you examples throughout this video. Once a card is caged by Marisil, he gains access to all of that card's activated abilities, but can use each only once each turn. Note though that this isn't limited to your turns. When it becomes a new turn, Marisil regains the use of all of his caged abilities. If a caged card's activated ability references itself, that ability is considered to reference Marisil instead. Interestingly, if the words a card named appear before the card's name, this doesn't refer to Marisil. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Technically, abilities like equip and crew are activated abilities. You can indeed decide to crew Marisil with three power and then equip him to a goat. Those abilities just don't actually do anything at all when applied to a human wizard. By that same note, artifacts that grant an ability when equipped do nothing in Marisil's cage, as they aren't actual abilities. Now that we know how Marisil interacts with cards and their activated abilities, what cards do we want to cage? The rest of this spotlight will focus on just one deck of many. As with any Magic the Gathering deck, there are nearly limitless options you could change for your version of this deck. For our Marisil deck, the number one most important card has to be Aetherling. Once caged, this shapeshifter gives Marisil four activated abilities to work with. Pumping his power or toughness might be useful someday, and making Marisil unblockable is also super important. But it's his first activated ability that makes him indispensable. Exiling Marisil and returning him to the battlefield is amazingly versatile. Not only does it allow our commander to evade removal and block while vanishing before damage on an opponent's turn, it also allows Marisil to re-enter the battlefield cheap and often, allowing us to give him multiple abilities quickly. To this end, we also recommend Conjurer's Closet for a similar effect at the end of each of our turns. Now that we have a few ways to feed Marisil abilities, let's take a look at some of the wild combos we run in our version of Marisil that will win us the game. Soul of New Phyrexia gives Marisil the ability to give all of our permanents indestructible until end of turn for 5 mana. Never Nero's Disc gives Marisil the ability to pay 1 mana and tap to destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Together they combine to allow you to pay 6 and tap Marisil to destroy all of your opponent's things while none of your things can be destroyed until end of turn. And as long as Marisil can tap, you can do that every turn. Anthroplasm is a bizarre creature with my pick for worst flavor text in the game. It also has the activated ability to pay X mana and tap to remove all plus one plus one counters from it, then place X plus one plus one counters on it. Weird. But if you pay five for X and you also have a caged Sage of Hours, things get interesting. Sage of Hours has an activated ability where the cost is to remove all plus one plus one counters from it. For each five counters removed this way, you get an extra turn. Giving Marisil both of these abilities allows you to pay five mana, tap him, place, then remove five plus one plus one counters to take an extra turn. And as long as you can tap Marisil, you can do this every turn. And every turn is yours. Up next, a devastating combo that Marisil can help protect. Whether caged or not, Duskmantle Guild Mage has the ability to make it so that whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, that player loses one life. But when you also control a mind crank, things start to get nutty. Suddenly, whenever an opponent loses life, they put that many cards from the top of their library into their graveyard. And every time a card enters their graveyard, they lose more life. So they put more cards in their graveyard, which makes them lose more life. You get the idea. This combo drains life totals and dumps cards until one or the other runs out. As mentioned earlier, you'll likely be loading Marisil up with abilities because you have Aetherling. Now we need something that untaps Marisil like Pilipala, Torchling, or Horseshoe Crab. Finally, we'll exile and return him with Aetherling's Flicker ability, and we'll cage Tree of Perdition. Now, we'll tap Marisil and exchange an opponent of our choice's life total with Marisil's toughness, leaving them with 4 life. Then, we'll untap Marisil. Now we're free to make Marisil unblockable, swing in for 4 damage, and remove that opponent from the game. 
Now that's Commander. There are some other combos, but they're hindered by Mirasil's once per turn limitation. That's why we run Quicksilver Elemental. This odd card has an activated ability that, when caged, lets Mirasil gain all activated abilities of target creature until end of turn. If he targets himself in this way, he can break free of his limitations and get multiple uses out of his abilities in a single turn. But this isn't as powerful as it may first appear. Using this ability gives Mirasil one extra use of each of his abilities. That means that this ability must be activated every additional time you want to use an ability. It does still allow us to do some fun things though. If Marisil has the caged abilities of Quicksilver Elemental, one of our untappers from earlier, and any ability that can generate three colored mana like Gilded Lotus or Prismatic Geoscope, he can generate unlimited mana. First, tap him for three blue mana. Use one to untap him, use one for Quicksilver Elemental's ability, and save one for later. Then you repeat. This will only work with abilities that untap for one mana or abilities like Pilipala who cost two to untap but also generate a mana of any color. Speaking of Pilipala, Grand Architect has abilities that let it make target artifact creature blue until end of turn, as well as tap a blue creature to make two mana. The catch is those two mana can only be used to cast or use abilities of artifacts. Lucky for us, using just one blue mana of our own to start the engine, we can make Pilipala blue and tap it to make two mana, which it can then spend to untap and generate one mana of any color. You can use this loop to tap and untap the little scarecrow that could until you have any amount of mana that you want. But what are we going to do with all this mana? There are a lot of contenders for infinite mana sinks, but I decided to go with these two for now. We can use our uncountable mana to load Walking Ballista with counters, then remove those to do uncountable damage. Or we can exile their entire deck and make an army in the process with Una, Queen of the Fae. We could also pour all of that mana into Torment of Hailfire and burn our opponents out that way, I suppose. But the deck isn't all super combos, so what else are we playing? The best way to assemble the pieces we need for our combos is to draw a ton of cards. Effects like Reforge the Soul shine here as Marisil doesn't care if a card is in our hand or graveyard. Whispering Madness is the same idea except it has Cypher, so we can hopefully do it more than once. Jace's Archivist is a creature who has this as a cheap activated ability. On the topic of activated abilities, we also run draw abilities, like Arcanus the Omnipotent, or Azumi Lady of Scrolls. When drawing cards just isn't cutting it, we go through the deck and we take what we need. Cards like Entomb and Buried Alive are great here, since Marisil likes the graveyard. We also run three other tutors. Demonic Tutor and Diabolic Tutor are classics, and Diabolic Revelation is a pricey late game option that can grab an entire combo at once. We also run Limduel's Vault to help find what we need. In this deck, we're only playing three equipment cards. Illusionist Bracers double up most of Marisil's abilities, while Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots give haste and protection in the form of Shroud and Hexproof. Speaking of protection, Undying Evil saves Marisil, makes him stronger, and lets him cage something for one mana. Release to the Wind lets us exile Marisil at instant speed, then play him later for free. Cephalid Ink Shrouder lets us give Marisil Shroud by discarding a card. And Shifty Doppelganger lets us exile Marisil while also giving us a creature to use before sacrificing and caging it on Marisil's return. For removal, we're playing Avatar of Woe. Chaos Warp can deal with any enemy problems, but can also be used on Marisil to let you recast him while maybe netting you a free permanent. Nahiri's Wrath is excellent in this sort of deck, doing huge damage to multiple targets with almost no downside. Aether Spouts and Cyclonic Rift join Neb's Disc as our board wipes. Aside from the previously mentioned Gilded Lotus and Prismatic Geoscope, we're running Soul Ring and six other mana artifacts that cost two. One of them is Felwar Stone, which features a quote by Marisil himself. For the land base, we're not going to get too detailed, but our deck runs pretty well on 36 lands and 9 mana rocks. To round out the deck, here are some other spells that I like to run in Marisil just because I feel like it. Skyship Stalker has three cheap abilities for Marisil, and one of them is Haste. Sure, why not? Havangul Lich lets us play creatures from any graveyard, sometimes getting an extra ability for the turn. Geth, Lord of the Vault, is rad, but he also has an interesting ability that lets us dig through our opponent's trash and then mill them a bit. Galecaster Colossus lets us tap any wizard we control to return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Mirage Mirror is just a really fun toy for Marisil. At its most basic, this can make Marisil a copy of the biggest creature on the battlefield, but it can also be used in silly ways like transforming him into a land in response to a board wipe. Speaking of mirrors, there's one more combo we run in our Marisil deck that I wanted to share with you. A combo so vile, so evil, so silly and fun, it truly belongs in a supervillain deck like Marisil. This combo requires that no fewer than six cards in the deck be dedicated to it. Including more pieces can theoretically win a game on turn three or four, but you'll have to look that up for yourself. 
Our combo begins with Marisil caging and gaining the activated ability of Mirror Mad Phantasm. When we activate it, we have to shuffle Marisil into our library. When we do, we reveal cards until we reveal a card named Mirror Mad Phantasm. We can't because the only one in our deck is currently in exile, so our entire deck is revealed and then we put it in our graveyard. Good work! Now one of these cards that entered our graveyard from our library is Narcomoeba so it enters the battlefield instead. Also in our graveyard will now be Fate Stitcher, who can be unearthed for one blue mana. Now that we control the zombie, we can play Gravecrawler from our graveyard for one black mana. Don't get too attached to our three new amigos though, because we're going to immediately sacrifice all three to pay the flashback cost for Dread Return. This allows us to return target creature from our graveyard to the battlefield. Once we target Laboratory Maniac, we're almost home. Now, if we would draw a card while our library has no cards in it, rather than lose the game like normal, we win the game instead. All we have to do now is wait patiently for our next draw step and hope Lab Maniac is still around to win. Or we could flashback Faithless Looting and win right now instead. There are just a ton of cards that you might want to include in this deck that we don't run for various reasons. There is a whole world of combos involving charge counters that we didn't get into at all for our build. I think the all-star for these combos involves Ventifact Bottle and Magistrate's Scepter allowing for another unlimited turns combo. Ovinomancer is a hidden gem here as well, returning Marisil to our hand and turning one of our opponent's creatures into a sheep. Pretty much any cards like Staff of Domination that give Marisil a bunch of abilities all at once are totally awesome in this deck as well. Overall, this version of Marisil the Pretender has been very fun and exciting to play. It doesn't win every game by any means, but even when it loses, it usually would have won next turn. If you're looking for a combo deck that stands out from the crowd, you could do worse than a tricky evil wizard like Marisil. I hope this deck spotlight has helped you all out. Let us know in the comments below what changes you'll make to your Marisil deck. 